Oh, I'm so excited. So I've actually been waiting for these boards for a long time. I live in a very remote place and it said they were delivered like a while ago, but they weren't. So I was freaking out a bit thinking they'd been lost, but here they are about a week late, but still the, the wind's been heavy on shore. So it's kind of been unsurfable. I'm really excited to try these boards though. They're ones that I've wanted for a long time. Firewire hooked it up. Oh, some swag. Let's go. Dope shirt. I like that. Another shirt. Oh, that's a Slater's design shirt. I like that. Oh, and a hoodie camel logo. That's sick. Oh, I'll definitely rock that. It's kind of small. Large, that'll fit. Woohoo! Oh my god, this is so exciting. Great packing job. These guys are pros, obviously. It's one of those things about being a surfer, it's like you can never really have enough boards. Like, I see every board and want them, but I've really been trying to like fill the holes in my quiver and see like what can I do with the least amount of boards, and I think I've got it covered. Glazer 5.8 and LFT construction. If you don't know, these are out of production, so I was really lucky to get a brand new one because um, they don't make these anymore. And I wanted it for a long time. Classic thruster, step up from the seaside. Um, this is going to be so sick. I can't wait to try it. All right, first off is the Machado Glazer. So it was kind of the evolution of the seaside, what he made after it. Everything I heard about this board from everyone who wrote it, everything I see online, says it's a great board um, and can hit conditions that are a little above the seaside, which is something that I wanted. It's out of production, so I was lucky to get one. Actually, I asked for it and they kind of had one in the back, right? But they don't sell them on the website anymore. And I think the reason for that is the seaside has been like an all-star, like top seller. Um, they've made it in so many constructions and uh, have made new um, versions of it. It's been like the flagship, what made Machado into like a very influential shaper. And this came out after it, so it was kind of like bad timing for it, I think. And so it just wasn't selling. So even though it's a great board, it kind of came down to economics where they just don't sell it anymore, which, which makes sense, right? Difference is it's got a lot of rocker in the nose. Still got the double barrel that they do in the back. Double concave. And they said to step it up in volume too. And one thing that's the best about Firewire that I absolutely love is their ability to hide foam very um, sneakily. They're so scientific, they, they aren't. So surfing progression, like board to construction design has sort of plateaued. There's not a lot of like leaps, but one thing that Firewire does is they're not married to traditional styles and they're not dogmatic about their approach. So they hide a lot of foam, a lot of thickness, a lot of foam in the chest. So they're good paddlers. So this will be a great step up for the head, head high and above. Um, and it's a faster too. So I'm really looking forward to trying this one out. Number two, now we're talking about leaps and progression. This is something not being married to tradition. The Sweet Potato by Dan Mann. I was so excited to get this one. I tried to get it earlier this year and they were sold out um, and they just came out now. So they, I got one now. Um, and it's meant to be a groveler, but it's performance. So it's meant to ride conditions that are traditionally for long borders, but have performance style. So it's got a ton of foam. It's pretty heavy to be honest with you, but it's got a ton of foam, so thick, it's so wide. Um, but the, look at the tail, it's really refined. It's very narrow, almost looks like a short board. It's got a swallow tail. So it's supposed to turn really well and be really, really fast in tiny waves. So um, that's why I got it. And again, I talk about innovation, pushing things, doing things that are new, that make sense. Firewire is killing it. And this board, like I said, it's been sold out for the entire year. So I finally got one in the size that I wanted. This one's a 5.8. I was torn between that and the 5.6, but I figured I'd go up just so, just to make sure I could ride it in like the smallest waves. And this one is, uh, yeah, it's 5.8, 41 liters. So that's, that's beefy. <laughs> I'm so excited to try this board. And if you look here at the deck, so it's so thick, but they like, 
it tapers off there, right? So like really, it's kind of, it still refines the rail, but there's so much volume in the middle here. So it's gonna be a great paddler and a great wave catcher. I'm like, I'm beyond excited to try this because it's like, it's like nothing else out there and nothing like nothing like that I own or have ever even tried. So it's, a, it's such an interesting shape, man. I'm, this is the board I'm the most excited for and I can't wait to have one. All right, so this is almost the complete quiver. There's a couple boards missing, but this right here, demo board I used to make videos. It'll never be surfed again, ignore that one. This one here, seven six. It's a thruster, um, technically a long board. You could call it a mid. I've had it for like 15 years. I used to store it at my parents' house here when I was away from the coast. And so I'd just fly back to be the only board I had. So I surfed this board everything from two feet to 15 feet. Um, some of the best ones I've ever caught were on this way uh, on this board because it's the only one that I had. So it's a very memorable board there. Very fast to thruster. So that's good in so many different types of conditions. I love that board. I'll never get rid of that board. So then we move on to the sweet potato. Now the sweet potato will replace this in two feet. I also have an eight foot long board. If I could, I would trade that eight foot board for something bigger. Like for me, if I'm going for a long board, you might as well have nine feet, ten, if I'd even get 10 and a half feet, if I could. Um, just cause it's a long board, I take it up very rarely. But this one is gonna replace the long board, the 8.0, and it's gonna re replace the 7.6 for small waves. Um, and I'm so excited, this is a very versatile board. So I'm covered from like zero to like two to three to four feet even with these boards here. Mostly this one, I'm hoping. Move on to the C side, that's like two to four to five, head high, shoulder to head. This board, C side, in the middle. So it's very tapered, but look at all the volume in there. So it's very, it's easy to catch waves, it's so floaty, paddles are great, and it's so fast, so, so fast. Very fun board, but it wasn't made for when it starts getting overhead, very powerful waves. And that's where I was kind of missing, because if we jump over one, so I bought this board, this is a 6.4. Um, and I was living away from the coast. If you see here, it's two pieces. It breaks in half, so you can put it in a bag. Because I was traveling to a ton every surf trip was on a plane. Um, I couldn't drive to any nearby waves. So my idea was I'd get a board that could break it in half for easy traveling, but also I wanted something that could do everything. So I made it like more of a performance style, but it's 6'4", so it's a better paddler, and could catch bigger waves. Well, it, and th the mistake I made was I tried to get a board that could do everything, and in doing so, I ended up with a board that doesn't do much great. It's always been very mediocre, um, and I find it's bad luck. Every time I take it anywhere, the waves suck anyways, but um, it's best. A very big, very big waves, but I, I honestly, I almost never take it out. It's cool. It's a beautiful looking board. If I were to do it again, because I'm intentionally made it wide in the chest, I would make it narrower. I would make it like probably down to here, like cut off a few inches on the side to make it faster, give it more drive because it's very clunky. Um, anyways, so coming back here, this is the new one, the Glazer. So this is supposed to be the step up from here. Well, this is a quad. It's a thruster and is met, made for that shoulder to above more performance. So. I'm really looking forward to that because I was missing that gap, right? So I was missing this gap before to, with the sweet potato because I had this, but it was there's no performance in that. You can kind of turn, but not really. It's just kind of straight lining. But now in the grovelers, when everyone's waiting for the swells, I can be out there surfing and ripping. This one does a lot, but this one does that, the hole on the other end that will hopefully replace this in a lot of ways as well too. So I feel like I have almost the perfect quiver. So we're covered from so many different conditions, so many different sizes, and I got it all here in just a couple of boards. So quick disclaimer, Firewire sent me these boards for free. They reached out to me, but one thing I'll say is that I get approached every week by companies that would like to do things. And the reason I always say no is because I prefer to promote my own stuff because I believe in my stuff more than anything. And I also don't want to cheapen it by being like, okay, here's another product, here's another product. When Firewire reached out to me, one of the biggest board builders in the world also in the past about seven years, I had previously bought five Firewire boards with my own money and loved them all. And I was trying to buy the sweet potato, but couldn't because it was sold out. I was willing to spend my own money on that one. And when they reached out to me, they said I could pick a couple boards. I also wanted this one. It was out of production. They found one. So thank you to Firewire. And so like the, this relationship I have with them is very organic. Um, they were my favorite board builders already. And now I was an easy yes when they wanted to send me some boards and let me pick which ones I got. So thanks a lot, Firewire. Um, I'm going to do a, a good review of each of them after I ride them as soon as the conditions arise. Um, and so I hope you enjoyed that, uh, this little explanation. I hope it gives you some ideas about how to do your quiver. Again, boards that do everything, do nothing kind of ver not versatile down here. These three boards here, ton of versatility. With three boards, cover absolutely everything. Um, so if I were to recommend to you um, what kind of boards to do, if you're getting your first short boards, if you're in that beginner to intermediate range and you're looking to progress, the way they hide foam and boards is insane. 
so much foam in the center of the seaside, so much foam in the chest of this glade and the, and the sweet potato. I think it's all foam. I think it's a boat, but it's supposed to be high performance. So we'll see. So foam is your friend until you get to the expert level. Um, and so for pretty much 99.9% .9 of surfers, this quiver can't fail you. So um, yeah, I hope you like that stuff. Um, comment below if you have any of these boards and let me know what to, uh, you think of them too. I'd really be interested to hear your thoughts um, and have you found that they perform for you. All right, so you're looking to expand your quiver. If you got one long board, you're looking to progressively step down or you just want to have a wider range of boards. That kind of advice assumes that you're already in great shape because having less foam requires a ton of more fitness. First of all is the paddle strength. So when you got less foam, the board doesn't float as well, it doesn't plane as well. So you need more strength to move through the water. So you takes more strength, but you go less distance, right? So you upgrade your strength, that'll compensate for that. So you get, get more waves, move around the lineup, get past the break, all that good stuff. As well, you have to be a lot better positioned um, when you have a shorter board, you gotta be right close to the pocket. But again, paddle strength helps with that a ton. You can be a little more down the shoulder when you're stronger. The other thing is stability because there's less foam, it's less stable, so that affects the pop-up. So having a stronger core will allow you to overcome that. So you can have control of your body, have a strong base, you don't tip all over the place, and you just are more locked in with your pop-up. The next one is balance. So they're a lot less stable, way more reactive, you have to great control. I describe this as ground up strength, meaning you start by strengthening your feet and work your way up all through all your muscles and through all your joints. When you do it this way, it gives you a feeling of being attached to the board um, and very, very reactive, better stability, all that stuff. So you start by strengthening your feet and do a lot of, you can, all, all this stuff can be improved at home, which is great. Now, if you are looking to do that and like you struggle with all those things I just mentioned, there's great news. Before the path, but traditionally, if you wanted to go to a shorter board, you had to surf more, but then that can be restricted by, you know, careers, conditions, uh, location where you're living and you can't surf that much. That really s extends the timeline it takes to progress to a short board if you can even make it there at all. But now with training at home, if you like really put in a hard work within like 30 days, you could make a massive, massive leap and begin to take out those leaders out of your board. So I've seen guys and girls all over the world do this. Some people who've been surfing their whole lives, like 30, 40 years, never had the strength to do a surfboard or a short board and then eventually, or not eventually, very quickly are able to do it for the first times in their lives. Very exciting. Or another um, common one is beginners. People who are struggling, they're not making progress, they're plateaued, do this kind of training, immediately they're feeling better, catching more waves, and it gives them the confidence to start stepping down, and when they have the strength to do so, they are more successful in that um, in a much shorter time range. So years, maybe, maybe never not making it, or doing it in a very, very tiny window and almost a guaranteed path to make it happen um, with training at home. And that's the value of getting stronger in the water and getting stronger on land. So you can expand your quiver. And honestly, it's very, very worth it. Even if you love your longboard, longboarding is great, but because the physical requirements are so much higher for this, it will, it will exceed the needs to be successful on land in your daily life. So if you can perform on one of these, on land your life, your quality of life will improve as well too. And it's a completely different experience. It's faster, more maneuverable, it's a totally different experience and it's worth it um, for every surfer to ha at least have the ability to uh, ride one of these once in their life. And it, so I recommend it for you. So if you'd like to get involved with that kind of training, get on that guaranteed path to make sure you can have any board in your quiver that you want, go to the description. There's a link there to a video. It's called Three Steps to Thousands of Waves. It describes all those things I talked about, the paddle training, um, the surfing patterns, the ground up strength, core strength, um, and a lot of breath training stuff as well too. So you can learn how we do it. Um, and if you're interested in that, they'll tell you how you can get involved with our training as well too. So that's it. My name is Kyle Russ. Thanks for watching this video.